When working with inferential statistics, we are trying to make judgments about our population information based on information we gather from the sample. Now in this chapter 7 of the textbook that we're looking at, we're going to look at confidence intervals of population parameters being the population proportion, the population mean, and the population variance. This example that I'm showing you on this particular segment is how we find a confidence interval for a population proportion. Now remember, a population proportion is the percentage of the population that has a particular characteristic. So a lot of the work we do goes back onto the work that we did with the binomial probabilities. And remember that when we're looking at our work that we did with our binomial probabilities, we would have a binomial probability distribution that would be approximately normal when n times p was greater than 5 and when n times q is greater than 5. And this information we'll use as we work through the confidence interval for a population proportion. So here's the setup of the question. The strength of an herbicide can be measured by the proportion of weeds it will kill. To determine this proportion for a specific herbicide, the herbicide was applied to 250 plants and 215 of them died. Now at this point they're just giving us the setup, but we don't know exactly what it is that they want us to do yet. Reading the questions helps us determine whether this is a probability question, whether it's a confidence interval question, whether it's a sample size question, or maybe whether it is a hypothesis testing question that will come later on down the road. So part A of the question says, let P be the population proportion of weeds that the herbicide will kill. So again, a lot of the wording within the problem tells us it's a population proportion problem. We have the population proportion symbol, and also when you're applying the herbicide to a plant, the plant will either die or it won't. So you have that success as opposed to failure. You have the repeated number of trials, we're trying this on 250 plants, and we're looking at a specific thing happening, how many successes we have out of how many trials. So we have P be the population proportion of weeds that the herbicide will kill, find a point estimate P hat for the um, proportion P. Now, P hat is our sample proportion out of the specific plants that we test this on and P is the population proportion. When we want to try to use information from our sample to guess our population parameter, then we need to show symbolically that it's the sample information, not the population information that we have. And with proportions, we put this hat over top for a sample proportion, and the P without the hat is talking about the population proportion. Now, a point estimate is just a one number guess at the parameter using sample information. And so for our p hat, we find this by taking p hat is equal to our number that met the criteria that we're looking for, the 215 plants that died out of the 250 plants that we tried the herbicide on. So that is our p hat, just our point estimate for it. And this is equal to 0 0.8 six when you divide it up. This one's a terminating decimal, so I got the exact value for it. Now, the second part, part B, says find a 90% confidence interval. So right in that question, it tells us we want to use a confidence interval to estimate the true proportion of the weeds that the herbicide will kill. See, our point estimate is either right or it's wrong, and it's just out of a sample. So most of the time, it's just an estimate, but it's not exactly on the true population proportion. If we take that point estimate, however, and use the information that we've gathered to the correct formulas that we need to use and the correct table values for our critical values, we can give a span of values from a low end to a high end that we can give where we are 95% sure, or in this case, 90% percent sure that actually the true population parameter falls within that span of numbers. So that's what we're looking for in terms of our confidence intervals. Now with a population proportion type of a problem that we want to give for a confidence interval, our formula is our p hat point estimate minus e to 
the p hat point estimate plus e, where e, our error of estimation, is our z sub alpha over 2 times the square root of p hat times q hat over n. Now z sub alpha over 2 are our critical values we find that if we have 90% confidence interval, so we want to have our 90%, that leaves 10% at the tails, and when we divide the 10% by 2, that's a 0.05 that we have in each tail, and we can do our inverse norm to get that z sub alpha over 2, or we can look at the critical values up on our table. Either way, for a 90% confidence interval, our z sub alpha over 2 is going to be 1.645. And again, you can get it from the inverse norm, or you can get it from your tables. From the earlier part, our p hat is the 0.86. And q hat, remember, we get by taking 1 minus p hat. So if I take 1 and subtract 0.86, I get 0 0.14 for our q hat. And then n is the number of trials, and for this our n is 250. We're going to calculate that off to the side, and then we'll form our confidence interval. So e is equal to our 1.645 for our 90% confidence interval using the standard normal curve times the square root of p hat is 0.86 times q hat which is 0.14 divided by n which for this problem is 250. So working this out on our calculator e is approximately equal to 0.036 and so we want to take our p hat, our 0.86, and subtract our e, 0.036, and then to 